This week in New Surrounding Israel, I'm going to be talking about the consequences for dividing Israel. So stay tuned, friends, for all the details. Well, shalom, everyone. Welcome once again to this week's newscast. I'm Robert Gottslig, your host. And as the world pressures Israel into a two-state solution, they ought to tremble because there are grave consequences for dividing God's land, ultimately because he owns it. In Leviticus 25, verse 23, we read where God says that the land shall not be sold permanently for the land is mine. Seeing then that God owns the land, he can give it to whomever he chooses, and he has to the physical descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, period. Well, the world is ignorant, we know, of what God's word says, and therefore they certainly don't fear him, and thus they make decisions based on their own thinking, their own debased minds. Such was the case when, just this past week, Ireland, Norway, and Spain decided they want to further divide God's land by recognizing a Palestinian state. Have a look. Today, Ireland, Norway and Spain are announcing that we recognize the state of Palestine. Each of us will now undertake whatever national steps are necessary to give effect to that decision. In the lead up to today's announcement, I've spoken with a number of other leaders and counterparts, and I'm confident that further countries will join us in taking this important step in the coming weeks. This is an historic and important day for Ireland and for Palestine. On the 21st of January 1919, Ireland asked the world to recognise our right to be an independent state. Our message to the free nations of the world was a plea for international recognition of our independence, emphasising our distinct national identity, our historical struggle, and our right to self-determination and justice. How about that? Pressuring Israel to make peace with the people who wish them dead. That's disgusting. And instead of standing with Israel and supporting Israel to allow them to destroy the terrorist organization Hamas in the last stronghold uh, in Rafah in Gaza, they join with many others demanding an end to the war, which only allows Hamas to live and fight another day. And then to top it off, it's like they're rewarding Hamas's demonic atrocities they've committed on October 7th, while pressuring Israel to divide up their land once again for a so-called peace. Well, I'll tell you what, Hamas isn't interested in two states. They, like the Palestinians, want one state, the state of Palestine, from the river to the sea, where no Jew can set foot in. That's even what Spain's Deputy Prime Minister Yolanda Diaz called for just last Friday, May 24th. Have a look. Vivimos un momento de la historia del mundo en el que hacer lo mínimo es a la vez heroico e insuficiente. Por eso no podemos detenernos. Palestina será libre desde el río hasta el mar. Pretty sad. Especially since the Palestinians technically already have a state. It's called Jordan, which was originally supposed to be part of a Jewish state, according to the Balfour Declaration of 1917, which, by the way, became international law in San Remo in 1920, when the League of Nations met after World War I. That's right. The Jewish people were promised a land in their ancestral homeland as the Allies carved up the Ottoman Empire after their defeat in World War I. Which, by the way, gave independence to Iraq in 1932, Syria in 1943, Lebanon in 1944, and Britain had the mandate to see that the Jewish people also received their independence but betrayed them. And instead, they carved up some 82% of the land that was set for a Jewish state and gave it to the Hashemite kingdom of Transjordan, now called Jordan. There's your Palestinian state, in which today most Palestinians obtain Jordanian passports. But when the British mandate was coming to an end, the United Nations in 1947 further partitioned the remaining 18% into a Jewish state and an Arab state, and the Jewish people accepted the plan and declared independence on May 14, 1948. 
But the Arabs, greedy for more land, waged a war on the Jewish state with 10 to 1 odds in their favor, and they lost. They lost because God's word said that he would regather his chosen people back one day. And that time, it was the perfect timing. It was perfect in his perfect plan. And no one could stop it, not even Satan himself. You know, the world uh, you'd think would be a little smarter and know their history a little better before they make stupid statements like what we just saw. But unfortunately, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And if you don't fear the Lord, well, then this is what you get. Leaders that have no idea what they're talking about. And somehow the world seems to think that if Israel just returns to pre-67 borders, that everything's going to be all right and peace will come. That's what Joe Biden and Justin Trudeau believe as well, amongst many other world leaders. Yet the Arabs and the Palestinians had the opportunity to a two-state solution on at least four occasions and rejected the offers every single time. So woe unto the nations that treat God and his land as though he doesn't exist because there are grave consequences for dividing up his land. Simply look at Joel chapter 3, verse 2. And this is what we read. I'll back it up to verse 1 here. For behold, in those days and at that time, when I bring back the captives of Judah and Jerusalem, I will also gather all nations and bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat, and I will enter into, into judgment with them there on account of my people, my heritage Israel, whom they scattered among the nations. They have also divided up my land. You know, when Israel's enemies of the past, what did they do? They, they didn't sit there at a drawing board and say, hey, let's, let's give uh, part over here to these people and part over here to the Jewish people and let's, let's divide up the land for peace. No, what did they do? They kept the land for themselves. This is speaking of in our day. Because the very first partition plan of a two-state solution came in 1937, and then in 47, and then in 2000, and then in 2008. They're dividing up the land in our day, and now there's further calls to do it. And they're pressuring Israel to do so. And it's going to intensify in the coming days, months, and years. And it's going to ultimately lead to the Daniel 927 peace treaty that we read about in the book of Daniel. And so here's a stern warning for the world right in God's word here in Joel chapter 3. A stern warning and a wake-up call to the world because God is faithful to his promises. And he's faithful to that promise that he made some 4,000 years ago, which is still relevant and in effect to this day that he made with Abraham, where he said, I will bless those that bless the Jewish people and I will curse those that curse them. So wake up, world, and get on board with God's prophetic plan for Israel. And with that, and until next time, thanks for joining us on another episode of In News Surrounding Israel. God bless.